Welcome to the Be Ruthless Show, where we have the conversations that other people don't. The conversations that other people won't. I'm your host, Sam Ruth, and I'm ready to make a lot of noise and disrupt things ruthlessly. Thanks for being here today. Now let's get to it. Welcome back to the Be Ruthless Show. I'm your host, Sam Ruth, and joining me today is my wonderful guest, Catherine Gagnon. Gagnon, if you're in English. <laughs> She's an emotional alchemist, mind body healing practitioner, and master transformational health coach who works with people who are tired of being tired and worried. She can hear, see, and feel the emotional and physical energy leaks in people and help them plug these leaks. As a result, her clients regain sustained physical and emotional energy. They recover faster from illnesses, attain mental clarity, self-confidence, feel more at peace with themselves and happier in their relationships. Catherine is a hang glider pilot certified as an applied neurosciences practitioner and holds a nurse practitioner diploma. She's currently pursuing a doctorate in natural medicine and studying the ancient wisdom of Siddha Vida that stems from Ayurvedic medicine. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show. You provide such amazing work and so many people in this world, especially right now, are struggling. So I'm looking forward to what you can share. Thank you. Looking forward to sharing with your audience. Indeed, so many people in the world right now um, are waking up. You know, it seems like the pandemic has kind of shaken everybody and um, disrupted some of the old ways of thinking and doing and I'm seeing a lot of people awaken to, you know, thinking, am I in a relationship that's fulfilling? Am I in a job that really um, nourishes my, my purpose and my soul and my skills? And a lot of people are in some form of transitions. And that comes with a lot of emotional turmoil and, and um, you know, uncertainty and fears and things like that. So it's definitely needed right now in the world. To create so something that better. You said that. I was just doing a talk the other day about staying resilient in challenging mm -hmm. times. And one of the things I talked about, which most people might not consider is, are you living life your way? Are you being true to yourself? And I didn't expect that to be a, a major point that resonated with people, but that was, that was the biggest takeaway that a lot of people are really not happy with, with where they're at and they're ready to make a shift. So there you go. And in a way, the pandemic was a great disruptor. And it's putting in our face the things that are standing in the way of, of having a life that we love. And when we're facing uncertainty, and unfortunately, some, you know, some people have died from the pandemic, then people look at their own life and going like, okay, well, if it was me tomorrow morning, would I be happy with the life that I've lived so far? And if the answer is no, well, that's it's time to reconsider how, you know, how we're doing things, how we're being and, and um, thinking. So I love that. I love that your audience resonated with that. Cause I think it's very much in the, in the air of things in the quantum field, like I would call. Um, well, you know, after I lost my husband, I hmm. became extremely intentional about who I spend my time with, what I do and I didn't realize that I hadn't been doing that before. I'm not the person that goes around doing things I really don't enjoy, but I still recognized that I was in a rut and I needed to be, I have limited time and I'm very picky about who and what I put into my circle. So, yes. but even good change is scary for people. So Absolutely. Yes. Recognizing good for you for and taking that leap are two different things. Absolutely. I, I was just going to say good for you for, for recognizing the preciousness of each moment and being intentional in, in where you choose to invest your time, energy and resources, you know, with people and all that. That so, is exactly what it is. And we're not taught that, that it's an investment nope. of our time, energy and resources. Exactly. And oftentimes, you know, when some, when people are wanting to have something better for themselves, for their life, um, we've been so taught to, to buy into a model of, you know, get a job, be content with what you have and, and to not really desire something more for ourselves. Like it's selfish or it's, you know, it's bad if you desire something. And, um, so many of, of my clients, um, 
initially when they came to me, they, they didn't know what they wanted because they, they never took the time to sit with themselves and be like, okay, what, what does I, what do I want? What do I love that doesn't require pleasing other people or doing something, you know, living the life that other people wanted you to live. I know I did that for a long time. And um, for me, the wake up call was a Lyme disease in 2016 that just, I mean, it, it, it almost killed me. And um, this is, that's when I really re-evaluated all of my life. And I was working as a nurse practitioner back then, which I had worked hard, you know, studying. And I mean, I had a great practice with great um, doctor, physician, collaborative physicians and amazing patients but I was not fulfilled. I was not happy fully, you know, and I knew there was something else and it, it, it took Lyme disease to kind of put it in my face and say, Hey, you know, this is a wake up call that now, you know, you're on your quest to survive, but on the other side of this, are you going to recreate the conditions that made, you know, that allowed the illness to come in, or are you going to do something different? So Back then, it was like a total life makeover of not only healing from Lyme using natural methods only, but I changed. I mean, I complete. I left the nurse practitioner, the medical world, to step fully into my coaching business, which I felt was just so. It's such an expanded model of what's possible to bring to people. I left my relationship at the time. It was a five-year relationship. It just didn't feel aligned. It felt like we were just kind of drifting in separate ways and um, no hard feelings. I mean, obviously it was sad a bit, but uh, it, it just, it was just my life asking me to up level and to really stop living the life that other people wanted me to live and really live according to me and to stop tolerating the things that were not fulfilling in my life. And like you said, when, when people say, yes, I desire this. And then they, they, they state their big dreams. What's the first thing that comes after that is the fears, the uncertainty, the what ifs, the, you know, and, and that's why making that leap is, is so important to make that leap, not with, you know, blinded eyes, but in, in, in a conscious way, and for me, the, the biggest thing was to have mentors and, you know, coaches and people that helped me do make that transition so that now I can help other people do that because I've, I've been there. I know the way. Right. Yeah. And I think it's so interesting. We both went something through something so difficult yes. and were forced to pause and slow yes. down. And we found answers we hadn't been looking for. But when you're an entrepreneur, when you're a businesswoman, when you're doing something you've worked so hard for, slowing down is frowned upon. Totally. Yes. And I don't want other people to have to have a crisis or an illness or a loss to evaluate. So that's why I'm loving this conversation because there are so many people right now living life that haven't, that are fine, but they haven't stopped to say, am I happy? Am I doing yes. what I love? And if you can recognize that when you're not in the middle of a trauma, yes, it's much, it's a much smoother road than when you're going through something <laughs> physically or mentally exhausting as well. I agree. I agree so much. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the people that have awakened and, and made those kind of drastic shifts have gone through a crisis, either an illness, uh, they've been laid off their job, a divorce, they've lost somebody. Um, you know, so like you, I'm thinking, let's not wait for a crisis right. <laughs> to, to make this happen. And, and, you know, sometimes I think some people might not recognize immediately that they are due for a change and that it might not require a total makeover, but, you know, some of the symptoms that, um, maybe your soul is, is calling you to, to, evolve or to, to ask for more or you know you're going through the motions of life and um you're not feeling excited you're not feeling like oh my gosh I cannot wait to wake up tomorrow morning to, to do the thing that's passionating to me you know or um you you might be numbing yourselves with screens food 
Um, however, you know, addictions of, um, of our modern times um, can be substance, but anything that is kind of dr drawing you outside of yourself so that you can find, you, you know, you think you can find happiness outside of yourself, but you feel disconnected from yourself. You don't even know what you want, what you desire. That's a sign that your life is asking you to do something different and, and align with your essence, discover who you are. I probably your audience uh, and my audience is, is on a, you know, on a personal growth journey and they've been on this journey for, for some time. And sometimes they feel a little bit frustrated that they're like, well, I've been doing all this work for all these years and how come I feel so stuck, you know, and, or I've tried different things and it just doesn't work. And I don't think I can be happy. And, and I'm just not meant to be happy. Right. I'm just right. never going to reach that level of happiness that other people have. Right, exactly. Which is really an illusion. Um, I have a client, um, some clients of mine, uh, I've really brought to them the notion that happiness is an inside job. You cannot make anybody happy and nobody can make you happy un unless you are in touch with that happiness within. And, and that requires you to know yourself, to um, give yourself the permission to want the things that you want because how many people are ashamed of their desires or they don't dare to want something more because oh, what would other people think right so there's all of these little steps it's subtle but it's just going deeper within and um, aligning even more with each choice aligning even more with the true essence of who you are and I think that's a lifelong journey and I think that we can shortcut the, the process to, to reach a certain point that, man, this feels so good. You know, <laughs> you heard that and, saying, go ahead. No, go ahead. That saying that says we spend the first, um, what is it? Uh, 40 years of our life getting to know who we are and the other 40 years of our life trying to enjoy our life. <laughs> So what if we can shorten the process of that? <laughs> yeah, start enjoying our life. And kids do, right? Kids have this internal GPS that they are looking to have fun and live life. And then you lose that. And yeah. that's, we don't have to. We don't have to go down the path that we think we're supposed to. Mm -hmm. um, even things like picking what school you want to go to or your hobbies. My my dad was a big influence in those parts of my life because it's what I was exposed to. Yeah. So we really, it's okay to sit back and say, am I enjoying this? Do I really love playing X number of hours a day while my friends are out playing somewhere else? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's been said that by the age of 35, our internal habits of thinking and doing are pretty much set, you know, uh, for the rest of our life. So why not be even more intentional? And it doesn't mean that if you're 36 that <laughs> and beyond that, you know, all is lost for you. It's too late. Quite, <laughs> quite the opposite. And this is what I find fascinating with, you know, just the work that I do in emotional alchemy and using um, neuro-linguistic programming is, you know, when you wake up one morning and you really ask yourself the question, like, what am I born for? What am I here? What's my purpose? And then you really ask these questions with the sincerity in your heart that maybe you've never asked before. And, and then all of a sudden you start having insights. Oh, I would love to do this, but oh, you can't make money doing something you love. Oh, I would love to do that. Oh, but what would other people think? You know, so, so that's when you start saying your desires or getting in touch with them and then the sets of beliefs oftentimes limiting beliefs are kind of coming up in your face that's a good sign because when these limiting beliefs are coming up that means that you can actually work with them instead of them being repressed you know inside and subconsciously running the show and you don't know why you keep repeating the same patterns and people pleasing and saying yes, but in your heart, it says no. And you keep having the same relationships and feeling anxious and things like that. that. This is all the subconscious beliefs. So when your subconscious beliefs are coming out and quite 
honestly, sometimes it can be frightening. That's a great time to work um, on reprogramming these subconscious beliefs. And, and for any of you that are saying, what are you talking about? There are things that we just might have ingrained in us. Boys don't cry. Yeah. This money profession never makes a certain amount of money. I'll only make this amount of money. Things that you might not consciously recognize are this type of a belief. So it's those, it's those they're almost like common sense and we just believe them and they're wrong. <laughs> exactly. Well, they're, they're wrong because they were, they're not aligned with our highest self and they were programmed into us from early ages or even, you know, transferred from one generation to the next, you know, all these beliefs. And that's when it's time to question these things, you know, like, oh, is that true that um, if I say no to somebody, then they're going to hate me for the rest of their life, or I'm a bad person if I, if I decide to focus on my well-being before other people's needs, right? And so I think this is where we get to question all of these things that have limited us, and not only limited us, but have created what I call the energy leaks. And, um, and if that's okay, I can, I can mention a few uh, energy yes. leaks. I want to know because I'm thinking <laughs> it's like, you know, like, a, like something draining in my plumbing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So um, some years ago when I started coaching and I, I started seeing my clients results and people were, you know, feeling empowered, they were making decisions in their life and feeling confident and making shifts and, and, um, you know, getting more abundance and healthier. And I was thinking to myself, what is it that I'm doing with people? Because I have a very scientific mind, but I also have a very spiritual mind. And for the longest time ever, these two were opposite. They were not liking, right. yes, they were not liking each other until I realized, oh, I can have both and more instead of either or. And so I remember one morning I was on my bicycle. That's usually when I'm moving and exercising, that's usually when I have my downloads that are the most in, in, you know, powerful and intuitive. And I thought, oh, I work with energy and I help people not only, so it came to me in the, in the form of a mathematical equation of like, oh, what is it that when you say I'm feeling so energetic or I want more energy, what is it that's happening? So the equation is finding the ways to generate energy. And for each person, it's different, but we have a set of common things, you know, food, sleep, exercise, that's kind of common, but you generate energy. And then to that, you add investing your energy in ways that are purposeful and intentional so that you have a greater return on, on investment, right? So if you're investing your energy with a particular project that you're passionate about, you're going to get more energy out of it than what you had to input. Or if you're going out to, I don't know, a coffee with a friend, let's say you're feeling tired and you're coming out of there and you're feeling like, woohoo, because, because you're, you invested in it strategically, just like what you mentioned earlier about how intentional you've become. So you generate energy plus you invest it strategically and then you divide that by the energy leaks. And that's where my specialty lies. And the energy leaks are... All the places, like you said, where your plumbing is leaking and you're leaking your personal power, you're leaking your energy. And I'm going to give some examples. I, I think it's going to hit home for your audience that it just contributes to create more of that blahness. So energy leaks in the body can be anything from pain because, you know, when you're feeling pain, it's just, ah, it, it hurts. It's draining your energy. Um, I mean, bad habits can is is a, is a energy leak not sleeping well you know looking going for substances smoking drinking whatever um but most of the energy leaks are in the emotional and mental body um examples of that energy leak is perfectionism oh i can't i you know until that's perfect i i, I can't sleep at night it's um, not listening to your truth. So how many times have you, have you thought, oh my gosh, I knew it. I should have. I should have done this. I knew it. So you did not listen to your truth. That's a huge energy leak in the moment. There's a big cost 
that we don't realize, but there's a big cost in not listening to our intuition or our inner voice or just even our desires in the moment. Um, it's saying yes to people and circumstances, but in your heart, it really said no. You really didn't want to go to that dinner with the in-laws, but you said yes because you wanted to please your partner. But really, it's taking you three times more energy to be there than what you wanted to do. Maybe you wanted to read at home or stay, you know, recharge your batteries or go with someone else, right? So this is a huge energy leak. Um, that, for anybody who listens regularly, these are that's what I call energy vampires. People or situations that just completely drain us. Yes, that we exactly. yes, that that, that it, you have a conversation with person A and you hang up feeling happy and uplifted and person B, you're like, oh, my God, I want to bang my head against the wall. <laughs> exactly. And then what happens is it's very costly to do that, to, to let these energy vampires or these energy leaks happen, because then let's say you're coming back from that dinner at the in-laws that you're feeling resentful. And the next thing you do is you're you know, you're not feeling good and you might want to calm that nervous system. You're going to go for the box of cookies and empty it and then feel guilty and ashamed again. And your body is not happy about this, obviously. So it's very costly when we think in terms of cost uh, to us to let the energy leak. It's like, you know, if your plumbing is, is leaking and your water bill is coming <laughs> up, I mean, it's going to be costly. Right. right? If that's energy. I expended energy there that I now don't have for my next whatever. So I'm, I'm not at my best, whether it's something for work or, or whatever's next. I've, I've depleted some energy that I could have stored. Exactly. It's like energy is like money, really. It's like, <laughs> oh, dang, you know, <laughs> I've spent money on this thing that I really didn't want. Now I'm stuck with it. So I lost the money and I didn't have the enjoyment of it. So <laughs> Um, it really is similar in those in those terms. So um, some more energy leaks, comparing yourself with other people, the imposter syndrome, um, hiding behind a mask. I find that this is a huge energy leak that, you know, people are going to work and how are you? Oh, yeah, I'm doing OK. And then you're putting on this mask. But inside you're feeling your your, your world is collapsing and, and you're feeling so alone and unseen and unheard but to maintain the mask requires a lot of energy and you come home after work triply more tired than if it was just a normal day of work right and people all over the world do this and when I lost Jim I did not care but it wasn't like the world loved it right it's not common to go around just saying I'm really not okay right now but it should be because my needs, I was meeting my own needs then. Oh, I love it. I love it that it's, it's okay not to be okay. And it actually is an opportunity for greater connection with people when we are, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with Brené Brown's work and the power of vulnerability, when we're actually being true and saying, you know what, I'm not feeling okay. And, and and then sometimes if pe people can feel uncomfortable, then then the greatest thing is to be able to state your needs. It's like, it's okay, you don't need to fix me. You can just hold space for me. You can just listen to me. Um, don't have pity, but I'm just letting you know, I'm, not, I'm just not okay. And, and you don't have to then pretend that you are. Exactly. Yeah, you don't have to use that energy. Exactly. So you're, you're conserving your energy for the actual healing that, that you're doing well with grieving or whatever else is happening in in your and so and having I yeah. with my clients we make up a point system and we assign <laughs> just because waking up if you if you're dealing with loss we've already expended energy that other people don't see haha <laughs> just I recognizing do. that you know what Jim's still gone my this go. is my reality it's enough and so watering the plants exhausts one of my clients but that's something she loves to do. So those are points that we do not want to give up on any day yep. and, and give to anything else. So I love this. this. They totally connect. Totally. I love it. And I love how you, you're nailing the essentials. I, I do the same with my clients that, I, um, that are suffering from Lyme disease because I've been coaching quite a few people to regain their, their health and their life. 
uh, from Lyme disease. And I tell them, I said, I say, your immune system is so busy on a daily basis. Your immune system is the most energy um, hungry system in your body. It's like the dryers in, in your house. You know, when you start the dryer, your lights are kind of going because <laughs> it's, it's pulling so many amps of electricity. Well, I say your immune system is the same thing. It's the system that in the digestive system that is pulling the most energy from you. So for, for my clients with Lyme disease, I tell them on a daily basis, you're already having to feed a hungry immune system and energy. So you have energy units available to you that you get to choose intentionally where you spend them. And it's, it's a challenge for, for, for people because their people around them are used to, you know, them doing everything for the, for, for them, for the, you know, for their entourage. And they're used to, and I tell my client, they're used to being you predictable, you that you're going to take care of everybody else's needs. And now you're changing and, and they're not going to be happy about it. There's going but, to be a drug for you to go back to being old you. Exactly. They want you to come back to being the old you, but your body doesn't want that. Because if you go back to being the old you, you're just going to throw yourself back in the conditions that have weakened your energy so that the illness could take root in your body in the first place. So I tell them, I say, until you can prove to your body that you're going to do things differently, you're going to set, set healthy boundaries, you're going to say no, you're going to prioritize your well-being. When your body is witnessing that, then it's going to allow you to regain health and it's going to give you back some energy progressively. And as soon as you go out and abuse that energy and you go and, and spend it all, like you put it on credit, like you did before, your body's going to go right back into the illness and say, no, you're not ready. So a lot of people who are not healing, it's actually because they haven't learned how to create a different structure of life, a different way to relate to themselves, to other people. And most of that stems in the subconscious beliefs that we're holding. So that's why I feel that for anybody, whether they, they want to improve their life, you know, feel more confident, heal from an illness, um, <clears throat> reduce pain, inflammation, to go and work, rewrite the subconscious beliefs, these are what are run, running the show, really, for all of the physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, the relational, the financial, it's all related to subconscious belief. So um, in my work in, in emotional alchemy, I love going to, um, we actually reprogram the nervous system. We reprogram new beliefs by going back in time and seeing from a different perspective where this person made a certain decision. So, and, and it's usually before the age of five when the brain was a sponge and you know we didn't have a conscious um, awareness of what was true or not true, right or not right. You know, we were just absorbing everything from our outside environment. And that's where subconscious beliefs are made. Like I'm not good enough. I need to do more in order to deserve having something that I want. Um, I'm always alone and, you know, I can't, ha I have to do it all myself. And, and all of these beliefs have these imprints. So what we do is we go back to that moment and re-imprint a, a different belief, a different decision in that moment. And then it re-imprints all of the events in that person's life leading to their life today. And so Millions they end up- need this, And I am picturing people in my world laughing and they're <laughs> the ones who need it the most, right? What about, what about people who are resistant to this kind of, the scientists? Yes. Well, if they're resistant to it, um, it, it, there's not one way of doing things. It's important that people find something that resonates with them. But ultimately, I would say, how many more years of unha unhappiness do you want to live? And if you were told tomorrow morning they have to, three months to live, what would you change? You know, and would you be willing to do things differently to see them under a different lens? And because I think autoimmune Lyme disease is very similar. To mental illness yes it's completely misunderstood the world is very unaware and a lot of people 
are stigmatized and questioned mm -hmm. with autoimmune disease, with chronic fatigue, with things that are medically real, but the world doesn't, they're invisible. There's no exactly. cast. So yeah. I'm very, very certain people listening can relate whether it's anxiety or Lyme disease, the process mm -hmm. is the same because we are up against these stigmas from the world that aren't true, but they're pretty widespread. Yes. And so these stigmas definitely disempower people. And that's why the re-empowerment and the healing has to come from within. You can't rely on the outside world to do that work for you. And that's, you know, that's what I did. I mean, when I, I fell sick in 2016, in hindsight, I was able to see that, oh my gosh, I got this thing in 2000 and it was dormant in my system for 16 years. And it just kind of all came out in 2016 because of a convergence of different stressors and things like that. And I was a nurse practitioner back then. And I was doing in the, the things to do in the Western medicine world. My colleagues were trying to help me out. And my doctor, she was like, well, well, Catherine, I think you're too stressed. And I said, oh, all right. I think I'm going to be alone on this quest. So I rolled up my sleeves and it was really about empowering myself and going in, inside to doing a lot of healing. Of course, I built a uh, protocol with evidence-based medicinal plants and natural supplements. I didn't want to take antibiotics because I know what how much of a havoc it, it, it creates in the gut. Um, and I did a lot of that emotional healing, uh, and that's what accelerated the results. You know, within four months, I regained 80% of my normal. Um, that's another story and a conference that I, I, uh, I teach to people if they're interested. Um, they can connect with me, and I'm happy to send them that, uh, that talk, which explains, you know, the pathophysiology of Lyme, the diagnosis, the challenges and treatment. But ultimately, I was not intimidated by the medical community because I was a medical professional. So, but a lot of people who don't have that um, chance, you know, they don't have the knowledge that I had back then. They don't have the, you know, most people would look up to their doctor and be like, okay, I'm going to do what you're saying. And if the doctor is like, well, no, the tests are showing negative. You're not, you, you don't have Lyme, you know? So it's a very disempowering system for people. And in a way, healing is a process of re-empowering the self and plugging those energy leaks. And I tell people, if you want, you know, that's specifically for Lyme, but um, some people will go just for the treatment. And I say, you know, the supplements and some people will go for the antibiotics. And I tell them, I say, you know what? It might work, but it's going to take a long time. When you combine the emotional healing with the physical, the treatment for the physical body, it's going to really shortcut your journey. And I mean, there are some mandatory passages, but you don't want to spend five years in treatment, honestly, because that's just way too long. It's For anyone listening that has been in the, I, I must be crazy. I know something's wrong, but nobody else agrees or can find anything. You are not, you know, you best. And yeah. answers are out there. And even if you don't know how to do the research, you don't have to listen to what everyone is telling you. Listen to your gut and find one person to say, help me find the rest of the people. Help me find somebody who will listen. Yes, yes. And help me find the rest of the puzzle pieces. I see puzzle pieces on your, on your wall behind you. <laughs> that's my, my logo it's and that basically but when I felt like I had to put my whole life back together and pick up the pieces go. and we all do throughout life and it's harder when you feel like the world just doesn't get it but there are people who do and yes. who will listen and believe you and help you find the answers so how do people connect with you even if yes. it's not Lyme disease if you're feeling like you have a question connect with Catherine. She's a wonderful source in multiple ways with a medical background, uh, but she will validate that you're going through whatever it is you are actually going through. Yes. And that you're not crazy and listening. Like you said, I love empowering people to listen to their inner wisdom and to become their own, their own healer. 
And this is what I show them to, you know, I guide them to become their own healer. Uh, so if people want to connect with me, um, they can go on my website, which is www.catherinegagnon.ca. So I'm going to spell it. So um, www.catherinegagnon.ca. I'm also on Facebook, Catherine Gagnon Transformational Coach and same name on Instagram. Um, and if uh, you would like to connect with me, I offer discovery sessions. Uh, it's a very powerful session where we, we really, we leave no stone unturned. We go into, you know, look at what's been slowing you down or stopping you from having the health, the vitality, um, the life that you want. And we really uncover some of the subconscious limiting beliefs uh, that have been running the show without your awareness up until now. And we create a powerful vision for what your life looks like on the other side of that challenge, and then a step-by-step -step plan to move you forward. So uh, we can put that link um, in the show notes. Absolutely. And um, that's the best, that would be the best way to, to, reach, um, to reach me. Do you have any final thoughts for people listening any last words yes you don't have to tolerate the things that are killing your soul and permission granted like with the stamp to desire what you desire your desires are like your compass they are leading you uh, to create the life that your soul knows that you're meant to have, however scary it is. So when you feel those fears coming up, um, get some help, a mentor, a coach, uh, like Sam, like me, like somebody that you resonate with, but we all deserve to have a life that we love. I absolutely love that. Don't tolerate what's killing your soul. That's yeah. amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your time and your story and your wisdom with us. To anyone listening, connect Catherine, G-A-G-N-O-N dot C-A. And until next time, always be ruthless. Thanks so much for listening today. Your support means everything to me, truly. If this podcast resonates with you, please do me a favor and join in the Ruthless Movement by making some noise and doing one of these four things. Subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Tell a friend so we can break stigmas even faster. Leave a review so people can see what you think of the show. And last, if you want to learn more about me and be a part of the Grief Hab community, please head on over to the Facebook group. We'd love to have you. Thanks again for spending your time with us and see you next week.